this section, I would like to go through the rest of the timeline editing tools. Let's continue by going through Slip. The Slip tool is an important tool in editing. Let me explain this a little bit further. Just imagine that my clips are in different tracks. In other words, I have one clip in track one and two clips on track two, just as what we see in right here. I will move the audios as well. I'm going to make the clip on track one a little bit longer on both sides. Because of how the tracks work, the topmost track is the one that shows. In this case, it's going to be digging the hole, and then clip number two comes, which is the gravel, and then clip number three comes, which is placing the post. Now, maybe I would like to see different frames of the gravel clip. Without changing its time position or its duration, I could just slip it so that the frames that show now are a little bit later on. I will zoom out so you can see it better. This is what slipping does. I will undo several times, and now I'm going to perform the same function with the tool. You will see four frames in the program panel. Top left and right are the last frame of the previous clip and the first frame of the clip that follows. At the bottom, in large and with timecode numbers overlaid on top, you will see the clip that we're working on. We see that the timecode number of the first frame is 0000, which means it is the very first frame of the movie. If I move all the way left, you will see that the timecode of the clip is now 914 on the left and 1213 on the right, meaning that the first frame of that clip is its timecode number 914, and the last frame is timecode number 1213. In the timeline, you see the indication that we have slipped this clip 7 seconds and 17 frames to the left. If I move to the right, you see that the numbers turn into positive. And of course, you see that we have slipped this one second and 27 frames to the right. And that is how it works. The next tool is the slide tool, which doesn't change the duration of the clip that we're working on, but it changes the duration of the previous clip and the clip that follows. Let me illustrate. I will work with these three clips here. So one, two, and three. One is going to be the auger, two is going to be the hole, and three is going to be cleaning up the hole. If I use slide in the middle clip and I move it left, you see that clip one is now shorter, clip three is longer by exactly the same amount of frames, and that the clip that I was working on, which is the hole, it's the same length, but it's in a different point in time. You see the displays in the program panel. Top, left, and right are the first and last frame of the clip that I'm working on. Bottom left is the last frame of clip one. Bottom right is the first frame of clip two. Because of how slide works, those are the frames that are dynamic. In other words, those are the ones changing if I slip left or right. Pretty cool. The next tool is the pen tool, and that has to do with keyframes. More on keyframes a little bit later, then let's talk about opacity. In the past, we used to be able to change opacity right in the timeline, and we still can. And it was done by looking at the opacity line and adding rubber band controls. This line was called the rubber band. And if you click to add controls or keyframes in this case, you could actually modify the opacity of the clip right in the timeline and you could create interpolation. For example, this clip is now fading up. So between the location of the first and the second keyframes, you see them here and here, the line is going up and it's going from zero opacity to 100%.
and then the opposite here at the end is going from 100% opacity to zero. More on keyframes a little bit later. I will undo these. The shortcut for undo is Control or Command Z. The hand tool lets you navigate the timeline left and right without moving the playhead. And of course, the zoom tool lets you zoom in and out of your own display of the timeline. So I can click and drag, and now it's going to zoom to that. I can also press and hold the Alt or Option key, and now the plus sign inside of the tool turns into a minus. I can click, and that in effect makes me zoom out. I can also use plus and minus in the main keyboard. I hope you enjoyed this title. In the next section, we're going to talk about transitions. See you then.